the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 16th day of this conference. It is finished. Holy Spirit, as your word comes forth, bring us restoration, bring us healing. Deliver us from every activity of the evil one, from all powers of darkness, and grant us all the graces and blessings that we need. Bring answers to all of our prayer intentions. Amen. So my dear friends, we have been trying to deal with the issue of ignorance, but trying to learn about certain things that we need to know as far as warfare is concerned. So we got to the point where Lucifer fell and his, now, his name is now changed to Satan, the adversary. But like I was saying yesterday, scripture makes us aware that he is still able to portray himself as an angel of light. If he's still able to portray himself as an angel of light, it means that discerning the truth from the false is very crucial in these times. Because a lot of the so-called light we see around is actually darkness in disguise. So you need to open your spiritual eyes and descend the times. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 will say, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, many of us go to the market, we go to business places, we go to entertainment centers, we go to educational centers, we go to religious institutions, we go to political spaces, we go for family meetings, we go for funerals, we go for parties, we go for school reunions, and we go for other meetings, and we think we are just attending a gathering or a social event. Or Is that not what we think? We are not even aware that these places are not just places of meeting for human beings, but they are a place where spirits gather. Hey, we don't know. We go to the market, we go to business places, we, we go for entertainment at entertainment centers, we, we go to educational centers, we enter into religious institutions, we, we enter into political spaces, we go for family meetings, we go for burials, we go for weddings, we go for school reunions, we go for parties, we go for meetings, and we think, we think that we are just attending a gathering or an event. We are not aware that these places that we go to are also gathering of spirits. So many go to the markets for transactions. They, they go to buy and sell and they do not know that it is a pool of spirits because spirits existed here before we came, that we are surrounded by a pool of spirit beings. So what wisdom teaches us is the game of fraternity. In other words, you must master how to fraternize, fraternize with those spirits if you want to rule the affairs of your life, your destiny and everything you care about. You think you are just entering into a school? It's not just a school. It's a meeting of spirits. You think you are just going for a funeral? It's not just, oh, I'm going for a funeral in Kumasi, I'll be back. It's not just a funeral you are going. It's a meeting of spirits. You think you are just attending a wedding? Oh, I have a wedding of, at Assemblies of God Church in Zakuma now. I'll be back by two. You'll be back by two. It's not just a wedding you are going. You are going for a gathering of spirits. Oh, I have a board meeting tomorrow at Coco Board House at 10 p.m. You think it is just a meeting? It's a gathering of spirits. Gathering of spirits. And that is how many people enter into universities, thinking that they are just going for education. They don't know that it's a gathering of spirits. <laughs> Look at the number of our children who learn how to smoke and use drugs and pick other vices from our various campuses. Look at the number of virgins who enter into our educational institutions but came out defla deflowered and some turned out to be sex addicts. Look at the number of our children who knew nothing about pornography, who knew nothing about stealing and other bad habits but they picked it up from school. They were wooed into all sorts of bad habits and the favor of their destiny vaporized from their lives and life has become a struggle because you thought you were just sending your child to a school for education? I pray for spiritual intelligence for you. It was a gathering of spirits, not just for education. I pray for spiritual intelligence for you to comprehend these mysteries. 
Look at the number of people who went for funerals, they went for weddings, they came back with a head with a headache, and their life has never been the same since. You think it was just a wedding or a funeral? It was a gathering of spirits. Ignorance is deadly. Think you are just going to the market to buy tomato and jenny and whatever? It's a gathering of spirits. Yeah. Gathering of spirits. You think you are just going for a party? Someone is having a birthday party? It's a gathering of spirits. You can come back with something you didn't go there with. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What about those who run to the church looking for salvation? Huh? What about those who run to the church looking for salvation? And it's in the church that they meet another church member or church members in the church. Eh? They run to the church looking for salvation. And it's in the church that they meet another church member or church members. And that company leads them to drinking and learning and practicing of other vice. There were people who came to the church innocent, but the church corrupted them. I'm telling you. There are people who were not drunkards so they became Christians and they learned how to drink in the church at Easter picnics. There are people who were virgins before they became Christians. And church members, pastors and church leaders are the people who deflowered them. There are people who picked up vices by the so-called from the so-called societies that they joined. Their fraternity with those so-called societies in the church. The place that was supposed to bring salvation to them ended up corrupting them. And you think you are just going to church? Sorry about you think you are just going to church? It's a meeting of spirits. There are some of you, it was after you got married that another church member came after your husband. Eh? After you got married, another church member came after your husband. Now your husband has left you and is with that church member. You didn't know that it was a pool of spirits. You thought you were just coming to church. God have mercy. God, have... If you understand these things I'm talking about, eh? You look at life differently. You, you stop taking things for granted. There are some people you have traveled from Accra to Techima. You followed somebody to go and bury the mother. You don't know those who cook the food or those who didn't cook the food. You jump on the food. You don't even pray at the funeral grounds. You eat I'm, I'm, I'm like someone who has not eaten for the past 30 days. You carry take away and you come home. You didn't know that a funeral is a gathering of spirits. Five years, ten years, the programming begins to manifest. How will you know that you picked it up from that funeral? How will you know? You thought you were just going for a funeral, Abby. You thought you were just going for a wedding, Abby. You thought you were just going to the market, Abby. You thought you were just going to church, Abby. You thought you were just going to a meeting, Abby. You didn't know that it was not just a gathering of humans. It was a gathering of spirits. So when Paul came, Paul was taken up into the prophetic. Paul, great man of revelation, I salute him. The grace that was on his head, I pray for some of that grace. Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, began to teach us. He began to teach us. He began to teach us that even though you and I have been saved, we are still operating in a realm that the devil wants to have authority over. So we have to wise up. Even though you and I have been saved, we are still operating in a realm that the devil wants to have authority over. So we have to wise up. So in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, that is the constituency of Lucifer. Now the devil, the son of the morning, when he fell, he established the systems. I told you ignorance is deadly. When he fell, he established the systems. So let's begin to look at the dimension of these satanic systems so that we know how they operate, so that we can, we can be wise. We can be wise. So the first one he mentions is principalities. Most of you know that verse. Hey, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities. Do you know what they are? Have they taken time to teach you what they are? Let's talk about these matters. Principalities. The word principality means first in rank. First in order. You know, principalities in biblical times refer to a state that is ruled by a prince. Prince. That is where the name is coming from. A governor or a satrap. So, when the principalities come to a territory, or when the demonic come to a territory, when the whole organization of Satan come to a territory, the people who march first are known as the princes, the principalities. Like I said before, Satan was in the presence of God. So he knows how God operates. 
so he began to imitate God's system. When you go to Judges chapter 20 verse 18, we are told that the Israelites went up to Bethel and they inquired of God, who will go first? And God said, let Judah go first. When it comes to warfare, all the armies of God do not match together. There are ranks like in the military. Those who go first, those who follow, those who are behind, there are strict instructions for doing warfare. You can check Joshua chapter 6 verse 12 and see how they went about warfare when they were going around the wall of Jericho. Seven priests carrying the ark and blowing the trumpet went first with armed men ahead of them and some at the rear that the people will follow. There is a modus operandi, a strategy when it comes to doing warfare. So when the, when, when the organization of demons come into a territory, the first people who come are the principalities. They come first. That's why I said, this battle that we are fighting is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. So let's look at principalities. So when a principality comes to your territory, what do they do? When principalities come to a place, the first thing they do is to set up a surveillance system. Say surveillance system. They set up a surveillance system. They will start monitoring the people that live there. They will start taking notes. They will start taking notes. They will know everyone who is a thief. They will know everyone who is a liar. They will know everyone who is a good man. They will know everyone who is generous. They will know everyone who is a fornicator. They will know everyone who is an adulterer. They will know everyone who is a gifted woman. They will know everyone who has a spirit of pride. They will know everyone who is jealous. They will know everyone who has a spirit of greed. Who has a spirit of lust. Look, you can hide your sins and your gifts from humans. But you cannot hide it from spirits. Because they are not limited by space and time. When principalities come to an area, they will look at everyone. They will study the terrain using the ministry of gatekeepers, familiar spirits, and watchers, and they will be taking notes. They are patient. They will be taking notes. They can spend 20 years taking notes on you and your family line. I'm telling you. Because in the spiritual realms, there is actually no time. That is why scripture will say that a thousand years in our dimensions are like one day unto God. So we are worried by time, but they are not affected by time. So they can take their time and study you. That's what the principalities do. Satan doesn't just attack. Oh. When he is attacking, he has correct information. He doesn't just attack. Like I said, they will know everyone that has gifts. They will know every secret sin. So they are watching. So for, us, for instance, a guy will wake up and a guy will tell his friends, I had this dream. And then the principalities will be watching using the gatekeepers, the familiar spirits and the watchers. Those are the, 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 the people that they will use, the medium that they will use to be watching. They are watching. And this guy's dream comes to pass. So they put a badge on his forehead. That means that he's of the prophetic order. He's a seer. They put a badge on him. Another lady wakes up. She says this will happen. After one year it has happened. They've taken notice. They'll put a badge on her. So what the principalities will do is that if they find that you have a gift, they begin to woo you. They begin to woo you. So what they do is that they create a system around you to make you feel you are important, just to give you confidence in your gift. And when you master that confidence in your gift, they know how to bring a transaction before you. They will whisper to you, oh, do this, do that, you succeed. They will bring people along your way who inflate your ego and make you feel like there is none like you. And now if you are not careful, you begin to think that that is the voice of the Holy Spirit you are hearing. That God is with you. And you begin to do whatever they whisper. And the more you do it, you now notice that your sight is becoming sharper. Your gift is becoming sharper. Everything you now see comes to pass. And you think that you have some power. Coupled with some people boots licking you and giving you fans all over the place. If you say something to happen, because they will mobilize demons and demons will bring it to pass. Or they will orchestrate occultism, pacifism. And after a while, you think you have spiritual powers. This, my dear friends, is the indirect process of creating false prophets. Do you know what is occultism, pacifism? Occultism, pacifism is when a lower demon is kicked away and replaced with a higher demon. So you go to this false prophet or the people at the other side with an issue that is demon-sponsored and they will take away the lower-ranking demon that is causing the problem and place a high-ranking demon that will appear to have solved the problem. So for some time you'll be okay, but it's just a matter of time. This other demon will also start causing you a problem. You go back to them, they will take away that demon and give you a higher demon. So over a period of 20 years, you keep going there. By the time you realize you are dealing with the highest demon, your issue will now become worse. Pataka, as my people will say. And one day, a point will come when 
we have 29 false prophets working like that for a territory. And for a territory to be taken, there must be a quorum, just like the way we need a quorum before a meeting can begin. It is spiritual technology. And when they reach a quorum, then a dimension of wicked, wickedness is now downloaded into that territory. These are spiritual matters. If you are not spiritually tuned, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Principalities. We are still on ignorance, though. We are educating ourselves. So that we will step out of ignorance. When the principalities come to a territory, that is what they do first. They set up a surveillance system. So don't think that you are just going for a funeral. You are just going to a family meeting. You are just going for a business meeting. You are just going for entertainment. You are entering a pool of spirits. Let us pray. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We pray for deliverance from evil. Especially deliverance from principalities. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, we ask you to look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. My dear friends, wherever you go, remember, it is not just a gathering of humans. It's a gathering of spirits. Have a prayerful day. Shalom. And God bless you.